can I take you to 2014 and 2015, those amazing eights that you were in? Um, that, that first year, 2014, because there was this really, really strong four that Jürgen had. Um, and then this Super 8 with Stan Aludis in the stroke seat, was he? I don't think it was very super for most of the year. But, <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh... I think I remember Jurgen telling us at one point when he was talking about selecting the eight because I think he said sixteen different people have raced in that eight that year. I think. Whoa. Um, it was twenty fourteen, and um, it was yeah, it was a really weird one because we hadn't had the best season in terms of World Cups and things like that. I remember I had a photo finish with the bow with the Belarusians, I think, in oh wow or something. And, yeah, but there's lots of very different combinations going on. And, um, yeah, I remember actually we kind of once it was all finally selected and obviously Stan came back, uh, yeah, which was a big, big boost for us. But I had, had to rejig the crew a little bit. And I remember it was in um, in Lucerne, the last regatta before before we went away on camp and things like that. Yeah. And I remember finishing the heat and getting out and... I was just walking around all wonky, carrying the boat. And so I said, are you all right, man? I was like, yeah, just got a bit of a niggle. And I went kind of finished and turned out I'd fractured a rib in the race. And then, so this was just before we were, this was just before we were supposed to go up to uh, Silveretta. For, oh, wow. Uh, so then I was basically told uh, I had, it was like a six week recovery, I think, from Lucerne. So then I was, I was, for the whole of that, so I was on the bike in the garage. You kidding? Yeah, and actually, Ollie. So the previous in the previous year, so Ollie and Ollie Cook and I were racing for the spot in the pen in Korea. And Ollie when I was a spare, and then for 2014, Ollie was the kind of the spare up moving up in Silverette. He ended up racing the. I think he was in the pair, maybe. Cox pair? No, not Cox pair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not been there. Anyway, no, because yeah, anyway. So Ollie was sat in the eight whilst I was in uh still Bretta, just on the bike in the garage every day for two sessions a day, just kind of waiting for my rib to heal. And kind of obviously then still Bretta finished and I still I still wasn't in the boat. Yeah. So I was kind of, I was going to all the meetings and all the briefings and stuff and kind of still trying to be part of the crew but kind of wasn't doing any of the training. So did a lot of long miles on the bike in the garage, which was quite good, I guess. But I remember yeah. Jürgen saying, "Right, well, if, you, if you're not ready to go by a viz, then you're out, basically. <laughs> so kind of this weird time where I was like, I can't rush my body healing. It's going to take yeah. a lot of time it takes. But I remember getting to a viz and I jumped back in the eight for the first session. I think it was like 20K up and down, like the usual kind of up and down the bridge. And I remember thinking like every stroke, like this is this is not good. Like it was really sore, but I kept my mouth shut, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And uh, kind of slowly and slowly got better day by day. And then I remember it um, by the time, kind of like last few pieces in the viz when we were doing kind of the 2K prep and things like that, uh, just about came good. So I was like, okay, I think I've kind of, managed to get myself back in the boat for stars, but that was that was just me getting back in the boat, let alone how the boat was actually going. Oh, that's a great story. I remember turning up to the heat in Amsterdam, and I think the Germans put six seconds into us in the heat, I think. And it was one of those moments where you're like, yeah, we've probably got a bit of work to do here. I think yeah. it was, the crew was always very capable of doing a performance. Uh, we weren't particularly that consistent. We had kind of ups and downs quite a lot in training, and but there was always the, we always knew that there was one good performance in there. And in the in the heat, we had a really bad first K, and we actually came quite good through like the middle and the latter part yeah. of the race. I went into the rep and we were like, right, all we've got to do is do a good first K and put, add it onto that, and we'll be fine. <laughs> and I remember we raced the Russians that year, who were quite strong. Yeah. And I, we had a really good first game and we'd end up just falling out at the back end and we'd like just kind of petered to the line as you kind of tend to in a rep sometimes. And so then we had these two halves of races which we were really happy with. We, we can actually put them together. And I remember the night before uh, the race saying all we've got to do is just put those two races together. And it was, that eight was probably 
one of the most uncomfortable eights to paddle in. We just couldn't paddle very well. It was really kind of rock and rolly. Yeah. And that. But then it was just on the morning of the final, we did went out for a pre-paddle and it was perfect. <laughs> so, oh, where's that been for the last kind of six weeks? And uh, I remember doing some bursts in the morning and the pre-paddle thinking, this is feeling pretty, pretty good today, you lads. And then we just kind of went through our process of the day and then, yeah, just kind of managed to put a performance there that we knew we were kind of capable of, but we didn't actually had never done before, kind of. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was amazing after that one. That race was pretty one of the one of the, kind of the backstory of it as well, with with the four being the top boat and yeah, eight, yeah, kind yeah. Of, and eight still wanted to make get a bit of revenge from the year before, but they were they was there. They had a bad regatta, I guess, and it was there. They wanted to make sure they won the eight because it was their top boat, and we had a kind of bunch of nippers i guess really and well a few, obviously pete was in there as well and sat yeah. and stuff i had actually sat in the three seat behind me which was an experience so <laughs> yeah. the less we can talk about that the better but he, like, yeah. he, he knows he knows the deal he's much better at the other end of the boat the next year you were in the top the, the eight was the top boat and you were riding shotgun in the bow seat <laughs> yeah i think honestly i had the best seat in the house for that year i think which is it was a, that was amazing that was just one of the i was i had a very great time in the rowing team because i managed to get i managed to avoid a lot of the i guess the time where people a lot of people struggle with the selection some of the selection stuff is so hard to call and some people get put through the mill a little bit with the seat races and i i kind of managed to avoid quite a lot of that um, oh, did you? whether whether that was favoritism or whether it was, you know, I think I'm sure the lads have got an opinion on it anyway but, uh, I think yeah my, both myself and Paul Bennett as well because we, we were in the pair together um, I think Jürgen quite liked kind of I think we were quite suited to, to the eight in terms of the way we rode and things like that so in 2015 for us both to be in there with the guys who were in that eight I remember sat in the bow seat just in training just some of the stuff we did in training in that eight was unbelievable. Just wow. the like the splits and stuff. And yeah, it was it was a great year that one. I mean, we didn't. I think there was some in the run up to the actual event. I think there was quite felt like there was quite a bit of pressure kind of on us a little bit, which was unusual because normally it was very, well the previous year it was no pressure at all because we were the yeah. second. Part. And that year was a bit different, but the level we were kind of rowing at in terms of training and stuff, I, I kind of. Everyone believes that we could win on our worst day. Wow! Um, which is kind of, which is kind of what happened a little bit. We didn't have the best row in the final, in terms of some of the stuff we've done, but just, which is fine. But it was, a, it was a hell of a race, and um, kind of, I remember actually in, when we made it into the video, we looked back at that video and said there was a real clear moment in that race where we could have just walked away. Um, and we kind of just got a bit tense and let the race kind of catch up with us and we yeah, yeah, yeah. too long just letting people into the race and out of the race and uh it was, it was a bit of that it wasn't it wasn't our best race at all but i remember sitting in the bow seat coming into the last 150 meters yeah and i was stand sat, I'd stand sat in front of me too and there's just he i think he had he had very much put all his all his beans, beans in by that point. I was like, don't see this very often. I had to give myself a bit of a talking to. I was like, right, you're going to have to help stand out a bit here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of carried me down the rest of the court. But yeah, that was amazing. That was one of the only times where I've kind of crossed the line and not actually known the result. And I was in the oh, bow really? seat. Yeah. Yeah. Because there it wasn't, it wasn't really much, I don't think anyone really knew. Um, I mean, it, was, it was pretty tight. But yeah, it was amazing. That year was, it was just great fun racing we had. And we had the Henley as well. Uh, against the Germans, which was oh, that was yeah. uh, being the bow seat at Henley down that stretch. When again, another big pressure one where we kind of thought it was all on the line. And again, one of those things when you're when you get ahead in an eight and you can see that much of the opponent, it becomes quite an easy race because you just kind of just keep doing the same thing and you don't feel the pain quite as much as when you're sat in the middle side by side and you don't really know where you are. But yeah, that was a pretty special day as well. Whoa. So you must have been pretty confident of making the team in twenty thirty eight in twenty sixteen. Um, I don't think you can ever be confident in, in the British team and making the boat. Really, oh. I think mean, that's that's the luxury of the Jurgen had, and uh, even in 
after 2014, we went up to Sierra Nevada that winter after, for the start of the 2015 season. And I remember finishing, I was one of the last ones to finish in Ergo, and I was just kind of trundling around the track with Jürgen. And they came up to me, he's like, oh, Matthew, how does it feel to be a world champion? I was like, there's about 12 world champions in this room. <laughs> we made absolutely no odds to what we did day to day because you're surrounded by guys who are just, everyone's just going about their business. Um, and I, that was one of the biggest things that stuck with me is that it doesn't matter what you did the year before. It didn't matter what you've done at the Worlds. It made no odds when it came to the start of the season. It was just starting afresh and you still had to do the same thing with all the guys around you and everyone was doing the same program. There's no yeah. excuse. You just, I mean, that was the great thing is everyone did the same training. So if you, if you lost to a seat race or you didn't have the performance you wanted, then you didn't really have an argument to say that you hadn't had the opportunity. Everyone did the same training. and That was kind of how we approached every year. So I guess uh, having won Worlds previous two years, you were kind of hoping that you kind of yeah. you'd go, I'd be, you never really know what's going to happen in an Olympic year. And I think the eight selection was quite contentious right till the end. We still weren't really, we'd had a few, it was a pretty up and down year again in terms of World Cup. Uh, we did a lot of chopping and changing in the crew. And yeah, I think the selection, I remember when they announced the team, they announced eight as a, a potential 10, I think. They hadn't actually named the eight yet. Oh. Even though we kind of knew that we were selected, we hadn't been officially selected, which was quite quite a tough one in terms of just getting your mindset right to go and race the game. You were still trying to race your teammates still. So that was a bit of a weird one. Um, so yeah, but then we had a bit of a, a golden moment in that, in which was the, the last World Cup. In, Wasn't it? Osnan, yeah that was kind of a turning point for that eight really um again in training we were flying but yeah. i think on race days it just became we just wanted it too much um there's a lot of energy going into kind of trying to move the boat rather than actually moving the boat <laughs> that kind yeah. of makes i remember we had one of the in the heat in poznan we had a uh, christian falcon was came went to some video with us at the end of the day he's like off the blocks at the start and it was like a it was like Niagara Falls. There was just water everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was just trying to work so hard to get ahead and it's just yeah, it was one of those classic less is more situations. Yeah. Uh, we had to we had this big chat about how we were gonna just you now let us let the rowing do the talking a little bit more and just kind of focus on what we do we could do. And we ended up uh, I'd moved out of the bow seat then actually moved back into the middle of the boat. Um, just for Poznan, so I'll be in the bow seat the rest of the season. So I was kind of, I was thinking, oh, maybe this isn't going that well. <laughs> and um, we ended up doing the race. I think I remember it was the clip. I think from like the K marker with the Germans. And we were kind of, I think we got caught with a left down at K on Germans. We were rating about thirty four, I think, in that race, and they were up at like thirty seven and stuff. And we were like yeah. still holding, still holding on to them. But I mean, we lost the race. I think by a half a length in the end. But it was the closest we've kind of been for a while and, and all season probably in that boat. And we were kind of down at like 34. But the feeling in the boat was that it was a massive win for us that event. Yeah. We turned the corner and we were like, that felt like how we should race this boat. And we kind of knew that we were going into a period in Silveretta kind of in, and Varese with like some fitness. Like that period was where we were going to get stronger. I mean, it was just going to be us. There was no racing to get distracted by. The boat was selected. We knew yeah. it was just uh, it was up to us to make it work. And uh, that was such a great period with those guys. We just every was day it? focus, and we just took it literally one. The phase was like one stroke at a time, and it's so simple, and it's, it gets used over and over again. But that was what we said on the start line at, at Poznan, which, which is probably why it went down at thirty-four strokes a minute, was because yeah. Every, Thinking too much, but we basically said if we can row like that at 36, 37, so it's minute, we're going to walk away from everyone here. And uh, we did that. Maybe that was our kind of mantra for the whole of that period between um, uh, Podman and Games was to take it like one to focus time. Let's do what we do well. We just like real long leg drive. And let's just do what we do well. Make it as strong as possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's one of the years of Jurgen's program is like. We just we know we're fit and strong. Let's just make the boat work for us. And uh, we turned up to Rio, and I remember in the heat, 
hadn't raced for six weeks or so, seven weeks. So you don't really know if whether yeah. what you've been doing for the last six, seven weeks has been maybe any faster or if everyone else has got faster. Or So there was a bit of an un unknown there. And I remember in the heat, we raced the Dutch who had just, they'd won mm -hmm. Henley and everyone was kind of thinking they were, they won yeah. the, they won Lucerne as well. They yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I know it was like 20 years since they won and there was a lot of hype. I remember that was kind of off that start line. I think it was about 20 strokes in. Yeah. I remember thinking like, we've got this. Like this, <laughs> this boat is just, it's just turned up a level. And that was, that was in the heat. And then, um, which again was a weird time because that was, um, the, the run up was pretty, pretty sketchy for me because uh, I, I kind of forget about this, and I think it kind of gets blurred into the whole Olympic kind of bubble. But um, when the we went out there, obviously Graham was in the quad and he was ill. And yeah. He was put into isolation in the hotel and was eventually sent home, which was obviously terrible for him. And it was kind of a real highlight of the team that there was kind of a bit of viruses around, and it could genuinely affect like yeah. your Olympic. Basically. And um, a few days. For our heat, okay, three days before our heat, I came down yeah. with some morning. I went down to yoga. I was like, not quite right. So he's like, I right, take the day off. So I didn't train that day. So obviously, it was a bit of a flashback from 2014. And uh, I think Matt Tarrant jumped in the eighth. But it was the, it was the one day where we were doing kind of training pieces, like one, who did a 1K off the start. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't didn't do that. So I was I was in bed all day that day. Then I got put into oh, yeah. isolation. So I moved out of my room, put into isolation next to Graham, and I was like, oh, this isn't, this isn't going to go too well. Thought I was kind of on the end. And then um, I had an ergo to do, but I was feeling better than two days before the heat, I think, or the day before the heat. And if my lactate was all right and my numbers were all right, then I would go from there, but it was very much a bit touch and go. So wow. I, hadn't, I hadn't actually done any sort of intensity for about five days before the heat. Um, and I remember jumping in and being like, yeah, this feels good. And I remember getting to halfway and being like, thank God we're so far ahead because I can't, I don't think I'm going to have much left in the session. <laughs> <laughs> so the heat was quite a bit, it was quite good, really. The fact that it was kind of, it kind of went all our way, really. And it was a bit of a, right, let's do the first K and see where we're at. And it kind of went perfectly in terms of that we weren't pushed too hard. But then there's a weird time where you have, you have six days off, maybe five days off. Yeah. yeah. Like the final. And uh, I think that was, that was great for me because I maybe get a bit more time to get back to where I was before. It was only a small illness, but it was you never really know with these things. Yeah, there were some great days in the middle there where just trying to keep up, keep the focus in the eight, and just trying to keep building on things. Uh, one of the best things that came out from that was us telling Feeling to talk less, which was quite good. So <laughs> we used oh, to have, really? yeah, we used to have a pool, which is always the always in yoga's boats you their third 500 was always very strong i guess we always looked to back load the race and we always had a call at halfway like ready to, to push us on for the next kind of 500 but the thing is we all knew that <laughs> like it drilled into us but what happened was every time that we spoke about it it became we got back to that kind of area where we tried working harder and yeah. kind of get more tense and kind of like work the catches harder and it just got a bit bit more aggressive and a bit sloppy so we actually end up eight times out of ten going slower <laughs> so we had this we had this we had the discussion as a group and with Fina we were like right if the boat's going if we're winning and it's and we're cruising along and everything feels good just don't say anything because we all know it's the third 500 I mean we're, we're gonna we're gonna keep doing what we're doing and we're probably and we're gonna push on as the race plan is but if we are down then you can give us a bit of a g up but uh, basically, it was that was one of the best things that happened that week. Was, oh, <laughs> was, wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was another day as well where we, it was one of the days where it was blown off. It was pretty windy, like there's cross winds coming in. And um, we just boated and we just, it was us and the four were out training in the morning. Yeah. My, I think it might have been at lunchtime, actually. I think they might have had some racing in the morning and then cancelled it. Um, <clears throat> so we went out paddling in the morning <clears throat> sorry and then um, 
the guy from the start line, they closed the lake and it was kind of really bad crosswinds coming in. Yeah. And you saw the German A and the uh, Polish A. And, and uh, yeah, they were all kind of, I think it was the Germans and uh, I think it was the Americans and the Kiwis all kind of ready to boat and they couldn't get out because they closed the lake. So it was us and the four up at the start line. It was it was horrific. Like you could barely row, to be fair. Yeah. And, um, I remember Jurgen saying before he went out, I was like, "This is this is great. Like if we can go rowing and they can't, and then that's perfect." <laughs> so we just did laps. And I remember I remember coming down to the bottom of the lake, and uh, the four was just kind of was basically nearly sinking. So he went over to the pontoon at the bottom, and they were like, "Guys, can you give us a hand?" Because they couldn't lift the boat out. Wow. Of the so we, we jumped out. It was like I think it was a metal pontoon, which was at the bottom of the course. So we jumped out of the eight, helped the four get all the water out, and then put it back in. And then we did the same with ours, and then we all got back in and rowed up again. Oh wow! <laughs> and it was one of those things. The rowing was terrible. Like was, the boats were like basically sinking, and we could barely row. But it was one of those moments where we were like, "There's no one else out here doing this. Like, let's just." We're getting extra, get extra, extra hours, extra minutes over the competitors, and they just sat there watching us run around in these conditions, which was quite, it was cool. It was, yeah, it was a bit of a, bit of a kind of, yeah, two fingers up to everyone else. So you felt, I mean, you must have felt pretty confident going into that final from things that I've heard. And uh... Uh, yeah, I think confidence is one thing. I think it's still an Olympic final, so. There's still that element of, uh, for a lot of us who've never been there before. Yeah. Um, well, I think there's three of us in the boat. It was our first games. But it was a weird one because we all knew that we just had to do our job to the best of our ability. And just, I think we had this call, which was do your like 12.5%. So no more, no less. Just do what you do every day in training, what we did in the heat. Just, just do that. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I say it was the easiest way to do it, but it's because once you once you got to halfway, it was everything had just clicked, and you can sit there just watch. The very rarely you sit in the middle of an eight, and you can see the bows of all the boats behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, that's why I kind of I always say it was the easiest race, but don't let Hodgie hear me say that. <laughs> <laughs> Hodgie said it was the most it was the hardest first 10 strokes that you could ever imagine anyone doing off the start and then the second 10 was the hardest second 10 i remember i remember the first 500 being kind of like just absolute rocket shit and it felt like even though there's eight of us it felt like you were just taking one stroke like it was like it's like you were kind of in a single but you just had like eight men power behind you like it was yeah. just ridiculous like the whole boat was just taking off and uh, we spent a lot of time working on our like transition so like probably like 300 to 500 um which is what we knew where we knew we were going to win the race it's like we if we can get into a rhythm that we can maintain through here and just yeah keep the boat moving and it's just going to set us up for the whole race and i think if you watch back watch by the racing it was that period that like second 500 where we just just didn't slow down and just moved away and then after that it was kind of it was kind of done really i always say i think one of the best i think i remember the previous world champs that we've won i think like cumulatively was about a second yeah like or out, of the, out of the two and then i remember looking back and we were like oh, we had like nearly three seconds at halfway which was pretty unusual for phenomenal race yeah so no yeah. It was, it was great group of guys but it was the whole the whole squad in rio was i believe that was a great four years really so the people in there it just it clicked and it worked really well from the sculling team all the way all the way through it was it was great i can't believe we've been we've been over an hour hour and a quarter actually i don't know where the time's gone oh, no. yes I, yeah I was, I, was I was going to ask you are you are you looking to be a professional sailor now for this part of your life or do you know what you're going to do after the america's cup um i mean opportunities just kind of seem to turn up and then it's whether you can either jump at them or yeah it's up, it's up to you really what happens but i guess there's opportunities are still there and i'll just keep taking them and see where it takes yeah. me um oh, pretty, yeah. fortunate, pretty fortunate to be able to do what i do at the moment so um yeah hopefully it continues but the thing with america's cup is it, it once it once this one's over then who knows what happens i think 
the defenders made the rules and you don't know who's going to be if you have a team or the, the money behind it to to get involved so but yeah. hopefully um i'll be hopefully doing some of the sale gp stuff again which will be cool um which they're trying to kind of push so this is like a no, that'll be real good spectator thing to watch there'll be seven yeah. boats on one court and that's the real cool but no i'm very lucky to be kind of sailing again it's kind of where i always kind of well when i was a kid i wanted to go to olympic sailing so that was my dream yeah that's what i kind of wanted to do and that's what i thought i was doing for quite a large portion of my of my childhood was aimed at that and then yeah like you say i kind of any opportunity that opened i'll probably i'll leap out and give it my all and it's kind of yeah we've gone all right so far Matt, you're an absolute star I can't thank you enough for giving us all this time in terms of, you know, in the middle of a busy schedule coming up to racing. Wish you the best of luck for those preparation races. No, but, just, uh, it's nice to chat about rowing again. I mean, I've been a bit bogged down with sailing for the last year. So. Yeah, of course. I, I could tell you love that. I really enjoyed <laughs> it. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot, Matt. Cheers, mate. Take care. Really.